to introduce David Tan. He's the co-founder and chief technology officer at CrushBank. David designed and built the very first version of CrushBank, which is the first IT help desk application built on Watson. He has a passion for embracing new and emerging technologies and for guiding companies through the changing world. His vision continues to shape the direction of CrushBank today. David, welcome, and we'd love for you to share um, your innovative thought, thought processes that have shaped CrushBank today. Thanks so much, Monica. I appreciate it. And I'm real happy to be here talking about uh, Watson and Embeddable AI uh, with IBM. <laughs> so I am going to do a live demo. So I only have a slide or two. Uh, so I'll take you through those real quick just to kind of give you an idea of what Crush Bank is and what we do and how we work. And then we'll jump over to the live demo. Hopefully uh, everything goes pretty smoothly. So give you a little bit of background on myself. I owned and managed a, an IT company, a managed service provider for 20 plus years. Um, and in that time, I started to see over the years the emerging challenges and difficulties in providing IT support, whether it's at the company that I own, the managed service provider, internal IT, OEM, large enterprise, you name it. Um, it's, it's all, it's, it's challenging and it's getting more and more difficult. So some of the stats on the screen here talk a little bit about uh, what I mean specifically. So this is, again, more focused towards the MSP, but... Uh, this is an IBM stat, 93% of data is unsearchable. Uh, Dave talked a bit about that. There's just large volumes of data that live inside tickets and notes and updates and chats and things like that, uh, emails, and it all contains really valuable information for solving support tickets. Uh, but a lot of it is just really difficult to unlock. So we tried to address that challenge. Uh, service tickets are often miscategorized. This causes issues with reporting and routing and workflows and alerting and things like that. And I'll talk a bit about how we, um, how we address that. Uh, there's also a huge amount of turnover. This is really true in any IT space. Uh, it's just really difficult to get people, key people, uh, and then onboard them and make them efficient. So the, the average MSP or the average IT company spending three to six months uh, bringing someone, finding someone, bringing them on board and getting them quote unquote billable is really unsustainable when you're a 50 or 60 person shop. Um, you know, 30% of your staff is turning over every year. That means you have an entire new company every three years and you lose the, the things that make you special as an IT provider, things like uh, intimacy and familiarity and understanding of how you've done things and how you continue to do things in the past. Um, and then the bottom right there is kind of the results of a data study I did. I looked at about 20 or so uh, IT providers and I tried to determine what the biggest driver of churn was. So in other words, losing clients. And it turns out the biggest uh, driver of churn is ticket escalation. So essentially tickets bouncing around from one person to another. So obviously people get frustrated when they have IT support issues. It gets stressful when someone can't solve it. But what really drives people crazy is when you have to either move it to someone else or escalate or call the vendor or things like that. So we really tried to find ways to address that uh, and make all the information you need to draw, to solve a ticket available at your fingertips rather than having to bounce around through the organization and, and search for information. Uh, so real quick on the next slide, uh, Monica, we talk a bit about uh, our architecture. I'm not gonna spend very long on this, but what's, what I think is interesting is you can kind of see the areas in, in green on this uh, slide where Watson sort of plugs in. So uh, we've been on this journey since IBM, with IBM since about 2016. So we've been building this a long time. Uh, but we started without an application. We started with an idea and wanted to play, quite frankly, with the Watson APIs and with the technology. Um, and we quickly started to see the way the platform is built as we could easily fit it into what we were doing and what other companies were doing and really put the AI where it was needed and, and make the user's experience seamless with the technology being underlying. So you can kind of see, like I said, we fit it in in a bunch of different places. We ingest data from enterprise applications. We reconfigure it, we run it through discovery, we enrich it, we use NLP. I'm going to show you all this really quickly through the demo. So why don't we, uh, instead of wasting any more time, why don't I jump over to my screen uh, and show you real quickly what we're doing. So we originally built uh, CrushBank as a web-based application. You can see this is the website. Uh, real simple, this is just centrally, essentially a search. So you can come in here, let's say a ticket comes in that you need to solve, you can come in here and do a search and it's almost like enterprise level search for your organization. Um, and, I, and the idea is we're ingesting data from all the different data sources that you have support information in. So most importantly, 
uh, which is what I'm going to show you in just a second, we're ingesting data from your ITSM platform. So, for example, if you're using a ServiceNow or a Remedy, we're pulling in the tickets and the notes and time entries and resolutions and all of that being pulled in. In a lot of cases with our customers, that's literally millions of tickets. So we talk about, again, being able to look and find the needle in the haystack of when I solved this problem and how I did it, or more importantly, it was someone else that did it a year ago. They're not here anymore. I can now find that answer. We're pulling in things like SharePoint and Confluence and Teams and Slack and web content and all of that, making it available again right inside One UI. Uh, but we had a mission early on after we built the web application to meet the users where they are. So in other words, this is a product called uh, ConnectWise Manage. This is not my product. This is just a really common ITSM platform in the managed services space and in enterprise IT where you put in time and tickets and notes and things like that. So this would be your, your ITSM platform. Um, and people are, are working inside this platform. They get a ticket. The last thing they want to do is switch here to do a search. So we, like I said, we, we have this mandate in place to meet the people where they work. So if I come in here and I click on one of these tickets, this is a company called Mitch and Murray, a fictional company, obviously. Uh, and the, the issue is that they need paperless reset. And then there's the description, please reset the paperless server. So I'm a tech, I don't know anything about this company or about this product, but I come in here and you'll see this little pod over here. This is our embedded application. So what happened is when I clicked on that ticket, we sent the summary, the company and the description to Watson. It did a search and it came back with the documents that it thinks best solve this problem. And we split it up into a few different categories. So we pulled back configs, documents, and if I scroll down here, we pulled back tickets. So essentially what I've done here is, again, I don't need to know anything about this particular issue, about this company, about whatever. I can now see all the information I need to start working on the problem. So in this case, here's a configuration that came out of a CMDB about what paperless is, where it's installed, how it works, vendor information. You can see it's by Sage. Everyone knows Sage, they're a large company. Password's not stored in here, but license keys and all that fun stuff are in here. Uh, I can go back and I can see there's other information about it. I can scroll down and I can see tickets. So here's a ticket about when someone reached into it. And again, we're pulling in the ticketing information. We're pulling in the time entries, any notes they spent on it. So if I don't know anything about this, again, I can start to oops, troubleshoot this issue just by looking through people's previous tickets. So I'll choose another one just to show you. Same idea, notes and time entries. In this scenario, what's really cool is someone also went and built a document about how to solve that problem. So here's just a Word document that we ingested, uh, I believe from a SharePoint portal about how to solve this ticket. Um, and again, we're just presenting it right in line and I didn't do anything and now I have step-by-step -step troubleshooting instructions uh, on how to solve this problem. So really cool, really slick. Again, all Watson on the AI, uh, the back end, determining what that ticket is uh, and finding the answer, answers for it. But there's a couple other things that we do, so I'm going to show you really quickly. Um, I mentioned before that a lot of tickets are miscategorized. So in this particular case, uh, here is where you categorize the tickets. You do type, type, subtype, and item, which are where you would then determine, like, all right, what type of ticket is this? This really kind of follows the ITIL, ITIL methodology. What type of ticket, subtype? What particular am I working on? And this lets me, again, kick off things like workflow and, and uh, routing and all that fun stuff. So what we do, and I'm just going to switch really quickly to a different instance here, is that we do that for you automatically. So if I come in here and I create a new ticket, and to avoid too many typos, I'm going to copy and paste, so I apologize. So let's say I'm a new user. I need to print to the new bullpen printer that was just set up. I come in here and I type print to new bullpen and please set up my computer. I'm just going to change this to new and I'm going to save. Oops, I got to choose the top if I choose the company. Uh, let's choose automation company. And by default, again, there's no type, subtype, and item. So what's going to happen is the same way that fired off when I open the ticket, as soon as I create a new ticket, this fires off to the back end. This is using the NLU service. So again, on my diagram before, I showed that we plug a bunch of different services in a bunch of different places. This is using NLU to categorize what it thinks this ticket is. And then it's taking that custom concept. We have a model of about 400 or so concepts. It's taking that custom concept and mapping it back to type, type subtype, and item. So I'm just going to hit refresh here, and you can see it automatically created the type of hardware and the subtype is printer. So I didn't have to do anything for that. 
that happened on the back end by categorizing the model by sorry by categorizing the ticket based on the custom model. Uh, and really quickly, the other thing I want to show you is the other way we do that is we have a product called Insight, which is essentially text analytics on all of your support tickets. So same idea, the tickets come in, we're categorizing them, and we present this heat map back to the customers that show them what their categories of tickets are that come in. So in this case, I'm looking across the entire organization for the last 12 months. VoIP is the single biggest category, and you can see the darker it is, the more tickets there are, and you can see the top 10. Not a surprise as a, a IT service provider, a lot of phone issues, authentication, email, printers, Outlook, Citrix, you know, fun stuff, you name it. So again, that's what's interesting about that is it helps our customers really understand what the users are calling in about. They can start to see trends. They're not relying on a either underqualified or overpaid uh, admin to categorize and read all these tickets where it's happening for them automatically. So it's a significant cost savings from a, an administrative standpoint as well. But the other thing we're doing, I think Dave touched on sentiment really quickly, is we're, ca we're capturing the sentiment of those and we're doing it in three different ways. So we're doing it the uh, description, which is kind of the details of the ticket, the subject, which you saw is just the topic, and then work notes, which are the time entries that the text put in. So it's a way for us to sort of break down the, uh, the sentiment of our clients. I mean, here I'm looking at all the clients, but if I want here and I change this to a particular company, uh, let's just type a company name in here. I type a company name in there. Now I can see the specific sentiment. I can see the concepts for that company. I can see the sentiment for that company. So as an account manager, I can say like, okay, uh, like we have a pretty fairly stable flow of uh, sentiment from them. So I'm not too worried about, but I can start to manage if it's going up or down. So again, really looking at what's in the ticket as opposed to just uh, relying on the uh, account manager or the tech saying, you know, these guys are pretty pissed off about something. We're actually looking at the underlying content. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing, Monica, give you back control. That's a very, very quick demo. Uh, I did see a few questions pop up. I don't know if there was something that you saw that was worth asking. Oh, absolutely. No, thank you, David, for sharing this uh, demo. Um, it was amazing to see all the dashboards and charts and the amount of insight that's available, especially on your comment based on the churn. I mean, you now have advantages in terms of time to market talent skills and still manage the churn. <laughs> Hopefully not enough churn. There's a question for here, which is, uh, can you share any details on specific KPIs or ROI you have addressed for your clients and how you envision your solution driving more benefits over time? Sure, so uh, we shoot for approximately 20 to 25% decrease in time to resolution. So again, and that's where we're able to get that almost universally across the board. So saving about 20% of the time it takes to solve a ticket. Um, you know, we do this calculation when we run either through like a larger webinar or through demos with clients. If we can just save five minutes off a ticket, I know that sounds like, you know, oh, five minutes, like that's that's either too small of a number or too hard to rationalize, but you can start to see it as you look at thousands of tickets across the board. If we can save five minutes off a ticket, uh, you can show significant return on your uh, on the time spent, like not only on CrushBank, but on the efficiency of your help desk. So, in other words, you know, you can get obviously you can hire less people, you can support more users, you can solve more tickets, you can increase customer sat. So, there's a lot of ways that are very directly measurable, and there are some ways that are a little bit more nebulous. Things I talked about, like getting a better uh, view into customer satisfaction by what's in the tickets. Uh, not having to have an admin categorize and budget for hours and then route tickets. So there's there's some hard and there's some soft ROI. But like I said, we shoot for about 20 to 25 percent, 20 to 25 percent decrease in total time to resolution and escalations.